New relief is here. There is a new payment schedule for the fourth round of checks. Lawmakers have announced that $1,600 checks are sent out immediately and automatically soon. Many people are waiting for the new round of fourth stimulus payments, especially as inflation continues to surge. Democratic and Republican lawmakers have held discussions about another round of relief and spending it as they seek to help the U.S. economic recovery. The efforts have focused primarily on authorizing billions of dollars, and now one additional state is actually sending out surprise checks this month. These checks could be worth as much as $1,600, and about 360,000 eligible recipients will receive the payments this month. The surprise stimulus money will be going out to some residents of Pennsylvania. This was first announced in August by the governor. A press release from the governor's office said that older Pennsylvanians and people with disabilities who qualify for a rebate on rent or relief taxes will be receiving even more money this year than they anticipated. This money will be sent to Pennsylvania residents who were approved for a property tax or a rent rebate in 2021. The new payment is a one-time bonus that will equal up to 70% of the amount of the original rebate. The individual was received in 2021, and that means the maximum payment will be around $1,600. The money for these one-time bonuses will come from federal funds allocated to Pennsylvania by the American Rescue Plan Act. And that was the last major crisis relief legislation that was signed into law by the federal government. Governor Wolf said in a statement, I am proud that bonus rebates are starting to relate to Pennsylvanians this week. For all adults in particular, many of whom are living on a fixed income, a bonus and a property tax and rent rebate program this year will be a game changer. These bonus rebates help older adults and Pennsylvanians and disabilities stay in their homes. If you live in Pennsylvania and received a property tax or a rent rebate in 2021, expect to see soon this surprise additional payment deposited into your account. If it does not apply to you though, there may be a chance you'll get some extra help from the government this year. Currently, there are at least 21 states issuing stimulus checks. Stimulus money to you. Joe Manchin has already weighed on President Biden's awaited student loan forgiveness announcement at the end of August. Biden announced up to $20,000 in federal debt cancellation for Pell Grant recipients making under $125,000 a year, and up to $10,000 in relief for other federal borrowers under the same income cap. While some Democratic lawmakers ain't laughed, laughed at the move, some even vowed to continue pushing the president to go further. Joe Manchin called the blanket relief excessive. The senator from Ohio. I come to the floor this evening to talk about the Democrats' latest reconciliation proposal. This is the tax and spend legislation you probably heard about. It's called the Inflation Reduction Act, but don't be fooled by the name. It doesn't actually decrease the inflationary pressure we all feel at the gas pump, at the grocery store, clothes shopping. Uh, it actually makes it worse. Sad that we've been down this road before. Early last year, the Democrats passed a massive $1.9 trillion package uh, supposedly focused on COVID, but most of it had nothing to do with COVID, but provided a lot of stimulus. It was the largest spending package ever in the history of Congress. And at the time it passed, a lot of us said, wow, the economy coming out of that first stage of COVID is already picking up steam. In fact, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office was telling us that by mid-year last year, we'd be back to where we were pre-pandemic, pretty strong economic growth. And yet the Democrats are insisting on another $1.9 trillion, almost $2 trillion of spending. Remember, we had just passed a $900 billion spending bill to help with COVID, which was bipartisan, by the way. I was part of putting that together. And so when it came to this new one, we said, whoa, don't do this. It's going to overheat the economy, overstimulate the economy, particularly because inflation is about demand mismatching supply. And this is exactly what was happening, is you had demand growing and supply constricted, partly because of COVID, partly because of policy decisions that were being made. So we warned that this much stimulus in the economy was gonna to lead to inflation. And very sadly, we were right. By the way, it wasn't just Republicans who said that. Some prominent Democrat officials said that, including some who had been uh, senior economic advisors in the Obama administration, in the Clinton administration, uh, including Larry Summers, who was quite prescient when he said, gosh, we shouldn't do this because this is going to heat up the economy and cause a lot of inflation. Uh, Democrats didn't pay any attention to those concerns then. 
they went ahead and passed that legislation. Remember, today we're looking at inflation that is the highest it's been in 40 years. And here we are today, about to do some of the decisions about abortion. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent. Mr. President. Senator from Texas. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the following senators be permitted to speak prior to the scheduled roll call vote. Uh, myself for up to 15 minutes, Senator Blackburn for up to 10 minutes, Senator Tester for up to five minutes. Without objection. Mr. President, coming to the floor and listening to some of my colleagues talk about their concern for lack of access to contraception, and um, some have uh, said we need to pass a bill codifying same-sex marriage when that is currently the law of the land. Uh, by virtue of a Supreme Court decision, the Obergefell case, uh, reminds me of the old story about the little boy who cried wolf. He cried wolf when there wasn't any danger, and then once there was danger, people didn't come to his aid because they thought it was another phony crying for a wolf, crying wolf. I can understand how our colleagues given inflation, given crime, given the broken borders, wanting to change the subject to something else. But that's all this is. This is mere posturing pre-November, pre-midterm elections. This isn't about changing the law, because the law already permits ready access to contraceptives. The law already permits same-sex marriage. And so this idea that we ought to spend scarce time here in the Congress, uh, which we have in limited supply, reaffirming rights that already exist is a clear political narrative designed to divert the American people's attention from things that really are at risk. That is the paychecks of every American family because of inflation, because of failed energy policies. We know that the price of gasoline and diesel and fuel to fill up your car so you can go to work or send your, uh, or, or, or take your child to school or summer camp. We know that our cities are on fire due to spiking crime waves connected to drugs that are coming across the southern border. And of course, we know that the southern border is completely open with a big red carpet and a welcome mat out for anybody who wants to come to the United States illegally. And the cartels that are rich and getting richer because of the flow of, hu of their human traffic has, are also getting rich because of the flow of illegal drugs that took the lives of 108,000 Americans last year alone. We know where those drugs are coming from and that the Biden administration is doing absolutely